So that's James's meal today. He's having a cauliflower soup, a little one, with the tempura shrimp and some toast, and carrot juice and bell pepper juice. That's yellow and orange mixed. And I'm having more soup in a bread bowl. And I'll talk about how I made that soup in a minute. Now, here's the cauliflower pulp from the juice which I used to make the soup. And I got about, it was one head of cauliflower, and I got about one cup of juice out of that head. And now this pulp is perfect for making cauliflower crust pizza. And I also want to show you this. I was given this today, which I'm thankful for. Um, but I wanted to show you it's gluten free and stuff. Number one ingredient. There you go. So a lot of the time people think that they're, and I don't even know what that is. Um, I have pulp in my fingernails. I always do. Anyway, um, a lot of the time people think that if they're getting gluten free stuff, that it's going to be healthier. But that is not the case. So I just wanted to show you that. And I guess I'll bring it to a friend who wants to eat it. And James is going to be talking about this book right here. So, oy, oy, oy. Oh, my back's a little bit sore. Oh. I packed groceries today. Heavy. So anyway, now while I eat this wonderful soup, and I'm also drinking carrot juice and bell pepper juice, just like James. But, um, so what I did is I juiced my cauliflower. Mm, 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 mm. It's perfection. Mmm. So, this is so good. Um, so I got the cup of, I really want to eat this now. It's very good. I get very excited about soup. And um, this one is not a raw vegan cauliflower soup, but it is a vegan cauliflower soup. So I'll go on about how to make it. So um, I remember I ate a gigantic, like that big, baked potato yesterday. Well, I didn't eat the whole thing because I don't think that's humanly possible. It was very large. So I ate about maybe two thirds of it, three quarters of it, and the rest of it, I whirred up in the food processor with some nutritional yeast, so about that much nutritional yeast, and a pinch, just a little bit, goes a long way with nutmeg, pinch of nutmeg, and um, maybe about a quarter teaspoon I'd say or a little more of Himalayan pink salt um, which I dissolved in some hot water which one cup of hot water so same amount as the juice of the cauliflower and a little bit of black pepper and I think that's all so that's my soup awesome so um, and I word that all together so while the food processor was going I added the cauliflower juice and then I added the hot water with the, well, not hot, really warm. It's warm water. So I made it just before I came out. And so, hmm, just the right temperature. So I put mine in a bread bowl. I didn't know if James would want it because I knew he wanted that tempera shrimp. So, yeah, so what is this? Uh, cauliflower soup, try some. Uh, just try a little bite. Well, it might be a little hot. No, it's not. Okay. Is it the best cauliflower soup you've had? Pretty close. I've only had it, I think, once before. Mm. It's very good. So, and very easy. You, right? yeah. it, go. it doesn't take, oh, what does it take? Maybe five minutes to juice a head of cauliflower? Does not take much. And then that's ready for cauliflower crust pizza for James tonight, which he is going to love. Yeah. There's a mosquito <laughs> out. There's snow on there. Wow, that is yeah. incredible. There was one inside the other night. See, mm. like a heavy, heavy cold outside. So, so yeah, uh, with that cauliflower, I'll talk about the cauliflower crust pizza more when I make it and serve it to James, if we're having a deck dinner dinner. But it's just, you can make cauliflower crust for pizza a number of ways. And 
this one that I'm going to make for James is going to be vegetarian, uh, but not vegan. It's going to contain an egg. You got to put something in there to stick that together. And what you do is you, so if you make it this way, if you make it for somebody who eats eggs, then you put the egg in with the cauliflower and the almond flour, um, with the cauliflower pulp and the almond flour, and you mix that together with some spices like, say, basil and oregano, maybe a, some garlic a little bit, and um, you know, things that you would want to have on pizza. So it could even be a little bit of fennel. But anyway, so you mix that in, maybe a little bit of ancho chili powder, if James is feeling excited but he probably isn't. So, anyway, you put that in, and then you take your parchment paper and you spread the cauliflower, like, out just with a spoon or whatever. You spread it onto the parchment paper into a basic circle, and then you put your toppings on, and you bake it in the oven, and there's your cauliflower crust pizza. As long as you put the parchment there, you're gonna be fine. And, um, as long as you've juiced your cauliflower and just have pulp, it's going to work out great. So there's a number of recipes on the internet for you to look up cauliflower crust pizza and just try. Just try one, another, another. And always use pulp. Don't use the cauliflower without um, juicing it. Juice is good for this. Really good for this. So, And I use the potato skin too. Mm. What do you have to say about Black Sight, the CEI in the post 9 11 world? Yeah. Mm. So, this is like in the first six years of, uh, after 9 11. Mm -hmm. Written by a guy whose name is Mudd. It's Philip Mudd, co deputy director of the CIA's Counter Terrorist Center and the FBI's National Security Branch. So, that's X. Here's regular CNN commentator, no mention of Fox. Um, he's the author of Head Game or something like that. He lives in Alexandria, Virginia, which is basically that same area that Langley is found in. Langley is where the center of the CIA is. And uh, so I, I should say if uh, there are any uh, putative left wingers out there who really aren't left wing, even democracy and all that sort of stuff. Fasten your seat belts. Put your uh, uh, put on a uh, put on. Uh, you better have a mouth guard. Put on your helmets because you're going to throw a, a hissy fit probably. Maybe put on the straight jacket too. You might uh, need it. Uh, I'm not suggesting you're mental, but you might have a little of a fit here prevent you from doing damage to yourself so this guy is talking about uh, basically about what happened at the various black sites and stuff like that and uh, it's in places like Eastern Europe uh, and uh, so on and so forth I don't know if he was actually involved in any of these interrogations that went on and stuff like that and interrogation is the proper word for it uh, I wouldn't call it questioning that would be euphemism and stuff like that. I, I, I try to leave euphemisms uh, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, you know, for uh, the putative left-wingers. Uh, like if there's anything that they like or people that they they think they like, they really, you know, it's it's benign neglect. In some, way, in some cases, malign neglect. But, uh, you know, they, they kind of like images of people. They stereotype people. And of course, there's uh, the opposite of euphemism. There's uh, uh, anything they don't like, they get all melodramatic. Well, they're yellow. Like exactly right. So uh, they're they're people, into the humanity, Other people so. are really just objects to them. I never even they thought about that, but uh, that's one of the reasons why so many uh, drama kids are, uh, you know, like uh, they're really that they're hams. They're not good at acting because they're too busy looking in the mirror. They're not busy enough looking at other people. At any rate, uh, yeah, this is a bit of a revelation. You know, so the uh, torture, uh, which was uh, torture uh, that you uh, heard about the CIA getting, uh, carrying out. Uh, we've got a distinguishment, Abu Ghraib, which was done by the military, the U.S. military or army. Uh, this was uh, the, 
the CIA. It was a different project. Program. Um, they didn't, apparently, uh, they weren't uh, supposed to do anything. There were a couple of people who got a little overly enthusiastic. They weren't supposed to do anything more than what uh, Navy SEALs and Air Force pilots were put through. So, yeah, they were put through torture in order to get them ready in case they got captured. So they'd be able to handle torture, but uh, that wouldn't be the kind of torture that Saddam Hussein would be doing. Because he's a person of color, of course, Saddam Hussein was uh, better than George Bush and stuff. This is for the putative left wingers, you know, being it's sarcastic, it's not even ironic. But, um, yeah, so you, you hear people complaining about Abu Ghraib and, uh, you know, saying the Americans are were worse or as bad as, oh, come on, you know, like, uh, here, this is an Abu Ghraib, but this guy claimed it might be true. Bears uh, checking him. That uh, three CIA detainees out of a hundred were waterboarded. Now, uh, one of them was waterboarded several times, the guy that they had the longest. Uh, so one report said 183 times, but that is, uh, that would involve uh, getting waterboarded several times during one session. So it wasn't 183 waterboarding sessions or anything like oh, that. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah, and so uh, the guy commented, actually, Subida or whatever his name was, the first guy they got hold of, he's, you know, like he'd been caught in a sh shootout, right? I mean, he got shot in the thigh, and he was commenting on how uh, kind of, uh, he hated the guys, but he's saying he's commenting on what they would have, what the Al-Qaeda would have done if they'd captured uh, someone. But he said, you guys were, he said they would have sawed off their, their leg. <laughs> and, but they wouldn't have kept the guy alive any longer than uh, uh, he was uh, useful. Whereas they gave him, like, uh, the Zubaida, the CIA made sure that he was, well, that he recovered. They didn't amputate his leg. It was apparently a serious sort of thing. So even a bozo like Zubaida noticed it and uh, commented. I don't think he was terribly trying to curry favor. He really didn't give uh, that much away, the occasional, the occasional sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, there's no doubt it's torture, but, you know, there's, uh, here's one guy, you know, like, he's uh, pretty far left wing. He always has been, ever since I've known him, I've known him on and off, more off, uh, for almost 50 years. But uh, one, one thing he said is, left wingers just don't handle nuance very well. And, yeah, uh, it's more the putative left wingers, which is almost all the people that claim to be left wingers. They don't handle nuance so very well. Kind of torture that CIA was doing in the I U.S. Don't military that's was bringing Abu Ghraib. What was that? There's a lot of really good left wing. I actually. hope so. There are. I hope. I there's hope. a lot of. Um, I really hope so. There's a lot of really gentle greens that mm -hmm. um, have just been misled by mm -hmm. aggressive yellows, mm -hmm. and so they'll talk the talk and stuff mm -hmm. because they actually believe that those yellows are passive. They don't understand that they're actually aggressive people. I understand. Uh, there were a lot of people involved like that in the Russian Revolution. And those I yellow know. type of people, they just went the way of the dinosaur, right? Yes, because they but weren't for nearly now, as, uh, that is who the Russian Russians are using and calling useful idiots. It's the yellow, the yellow. Oh, absolutely. That's mm -hmm. who they're yeah. using in our society. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Yes. They're still around, right? They're, they're the putative left wingers who just uh, never read their. George Orwell properly didn't yeah, realize that Orwell exactly. was talking about the people that they were uh, making excuses for or supporting or whatever. So here's the deal. Chomsky, am I sometimes called Chomsky when I'm not being that um, uh, ready, um, said somewhere, we've got to be ten times better than than the people we're fighting against. You know, you know like when he says we about the United States, I don't think he's being terribly, you know, he's just not, he doesn't really believe in democracy. He's, uh, I think he's uh, described himself as a libertarian, I presume that means anarchist. He really doesn't. Anarchists don't believe in democracy. They either believe in that they're pa pacifists, and I hope he's a pacifist, then uh, they believe in uh, the hippy dippy. Garden of Eden thing, and the two sides of that are Woodstock and Altamont. 
And then the ones that are violent ones, and they just believe in cells. And they, they the ultimate uh, thing with anarchy like that is just whoever thinks is who's ever the most violent with their direct action is going to come out on top. With the the pacifists, you know, like uh, they're either mucking around in their own muck, like in Woodstock. The other side of the coin is they've got not no, you know, they're going around. Uh, what happened at Altamont, the Rolling Stones, they hired the Hells Angels to handle security. I, I suppose the ultimate anarchists would have thought, eh, you know, like, we wouldn't have had any security, but, you know, someone's going to handle security somewhere. And when you watch the film Altamont, you've never seen it, right? It's hopeless. You watch little Mick Jagger's going, Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, calm down. You know, and you can see these Hells Angels, they're on stage, they've basically commandeered the stage, they're just looking at uh, Mick Jagger with uh, seething contempt and stuff like that. You know, like, uh, the only people that, uh, person I, I, that I know of that stood up to him was Marty Balin, and he got laid out with a pool cue. Uh, he was uh, one of the singers with Jefferson Airplane, who just died recently. Too bad, that, that guy had, uh, that guy was... Uh, he had standards. Mick Jagger, brothers and sisters. And uh, so, you know, it's just a small number, and they've got this crowd of 300,000. A small number of thugs have got this crowd of 300,000 just in their, just under their thumbs, to use a Rolling Stone title. That was good. Actually, that's when the, the violence broke out when, it was when they were singing Under My Thumb. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought it was simply for the devil, but I think it was Under My Thumb. I hope you liked the way I worked. I did. That was okay. really nice. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like uh, three people get waterboarded. I think Saddam was saying, you know, even in the same time period, in five years or something like that, would have waterboarded a little bit more than 30 people. The fact is, waterboarding was probably just a preliminary to people being... Well, I'm not going to mention the sort of things no. that Saddam Don't Hussein mention. did because of... Uh, Pauline gets, uh, she's squeamish, and uh, I don't blame, I used to be that way until I started reading history, and especially ancient history, the ancient Assyrians, people of color, but uh, they were, they were horrible brutes, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, brutality knows no color, you know, like, uh, you know, put your seatbelt on really tight, and knows no color, they're, they're horrible brutes that are white, and black, and brown, yellow, and all that sort of stuff. So, just put your seat belts on extra tight. Don't have a tizzy fist. Don't swallow your tongue. Okay, no, okay it's so did you like the book? But it's, it's actually the way it is. So, uh, the book is uh, fairly informative. It's very, very, um, there are very few details because he doesn't want to give away who the sources are. Oh. Mm. I presume that's why. So, uh, you kind of have to read in between the lines. One of, the, one of his sources said, uh, you know, these... Uh, when it is concerning the the torture, he said, "Hey, you know, I'm a frat boy. We didn't. We did worse when we were in initiations." <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, I hope he was exaggerating, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. Things happen with initiations and things like that. But it kind of puts it into context. So here's the deal. You know, like if these guys were really smart, they wouldn't have to do any torturing. I don't believe in any torture. It doesn't you know any of this waterboarding, sleep deprivation, or anything like that. What they should do is they ca should capture folks, and if they um, if they don't give up on, they are prisoners for life. If the people that they're that are, they're fighting uh, for, uh, you know, if they've declared war in the United States and never bother on declaring war, well, they're prisoners for life. They they are war prisoners. There's lots of putative left wingers to say 9/11 was a, a crime. Yeah, you're right. But it was also a war. What is it when you combine war with crime? Oh yeah, it's a war crime. Which means they never, ever go, uh, even if the an end of the war is declared. Because, you see, it's commented on here, they're talking about some CIA guys who are working with uh, the, uh, I think the guys in Afghanistan. And they're saying, you guys aren't wearing uniforms. Shouldn't we be wearing uniforms? And what they were saying is the people we're fighting against aren't wearing uniforms. There's no Geneva Conventions for them, and frankly, there's no Geneva Conventions for you. And uh, 
I can remember the cynicism amongst the uh, putative left-wingers uh, about uh, illegal combatants when George Bush said that. I caught one professor. I, I, I inveigled in, in, into it, you know, like saying, you know, like he was doing a, 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 a course on, on uh, globalization, and he was uh, complaining about illegal combatants. So I said, where does that come from, you know? Uh, one kid later, after I did this, at the, during the break, his evening class, he said, I knew what was coming. I knew you. <laughs> I guess I'd mentioned it to him. Yeah, not that I was going to nail this guy, but I just mentioned the issue. And the guy said, well, the Americans just made it up. <laughs> I knew he'd say that. I said, no, 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 no. This stuff is in things like the Geneva Convention, the Hague Conventions. You're supposed to actually wear a military uniform. You're supposed to actually be carrying your arms unconcealed. You can't hide amongst civilians, you know, like if you're on an airplane and you're you're hiding amongst civilians. There's a reason why these rules are there. It's to stop people from, you know, carrying out uh, reprisals against civilians and stuff like that. Uh, it's a it's a really good rule. And the whole thing is, if you break those rules, you aren't protected by things like the Geneva Conventions. You just aren't. So, yeah, I nailed that out. There was just a silent hush. I can remember one woman that I'd never seen. You know, she uh, she came out, uh, she saw me after the class, and she said, geez, I thought you were just some guy like Michael Moore. And I'm going, wow, okay. <laughs> what an ugly book. But, uh, but uh, you, really, <laughs> you really nailed it. You really nailed that professor. And I'm going, yeah, I did. I kind of did. So, um, yeah. So, again, there's this, uh, they, they, the CIA actually is a little bit worried about that, about the Geneva Conventions and stuff like that. So you can see how they, you know, like they're, the, the uh, Department of Justice was laying down ground rules for them, and uh, generally they followed them. When people didn't, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, um, they were punished. That was the CIA. Abu Ghraib uh, got a little bit out of hand. So uh, I just uh, make a distinction. These guys were bad. Saddam Hussein, way worse. Al Qaeda, way worse. I don't care if they're people of color or these these people are n people of not color or stuff like that. You know the standards get applied with me right across the board. Saddam Hussein was insanely bad. And anyone who supports him over the United States is a useless idiot. Not even useful idiot. Because Saddam Hussein was a national socialist. Well, a national communist, which is even worse. Even more totalitarian. Here's a quote from him. This is a multiple sound bite. I was put on this earth to rid the earth of Safavids, or Safavids, however you want to pronounce it, Jews and flies. Safavids are Persians. These are Adolf Hitler type of quotes. And when you support an idiot like that over the United States, I'm not a big huge fan of George Bush, the United States in particular, but I know how to do nuance. At least better than fake putative left wingers out there. So, there you go. Anyway, uh, not necessarily recommended uh, you putative left-wingers who only like reading Chomsky and you don't really read all sorts of other sides, not just the other side. Don't bother. If you do, put on the seatbelt, maybe the straitjacket, helmet, you know, put in the mouth guard and try to get it so you don't